Hi there, Ollie. Uh, what sort of shape are you and your, your squad in after an attritional Tuesday night? And of, of course, with the Europa League coming up, I guess you have to be thinking about how you're going to manage your resources even more carefully. Yeah, well, we've uh, we've had a, a rare opportunity to uh, do a little bit of training and actually uh, some recovery because uh, uh, you've got Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and then not a game until Sunday. So that's been a rarity for us, really. Um, of course, Paul is still out. Eric's been training, so um, that's a boost for us. Simon Peach. Well, just following up on that, in terms of training, it looks like you've got some of the young lads with you now. Are they going to be with you for the rest of the season or is that short term? And in terms of the Europa League, we've seen both of Arsenal's fixtures moved to neutral territory. Your uh, first leg's been moved to neutral territory. Do you think this is sustainable? Uh, first of all, with the first question, the young kids, yeah, we've moved uh, Shola up with us. Uh, Hannibal would, will probably... Uh, uh, he'll join us um, and we'll keep them with us for a while. Uh, I think it's the next step in their development and we've just got to take the hit on them when they play in the reserves that they have to travel by themselves so they, they move into our bubble. And that's, uh, I think that's a, a nice step for them, uh, well deserved because they've done really well. And uh, with Europe, of course, it's um, that's what we hope that it's going to be sustainable. Uh, the different governments, the, the travel in Europe at the moment is difficult, as we all know, and it's not a decision that we made. But um, when it when one game's in a, on a neutral venue, why it's it's a disadvantage, of course, for the for the team that doesn't have the home game. So. Um, uh, but that's out of our hands. It's nothing that uh, we can say. Uh, okay, we'll we'll just meet in Turin and play one game. Uh, I wouldn't mind that at all. One game less. Simon Tom. Hi, Ollie. Um, I know you've you've had some good results against Liverpool in the cup and West Ham in the Southampton game, but it's one win in four in the league. How important? Is it to get that momentum again because the gap to Man City is getting bigger and the other teams are, are getting closer? Of course, it's an important game for us this weekend. It's, a, it's an important spell. Uh, it's uh, time now that we... Uh, every game, you tick one off and there's less and less possibility to, uh, to catch up points on the teams in front of you. And uh, that's what we want to do. That's what we're, we're here to do. And Sunday's a big one for us in that respect to get back on winning ways. Uh, the, the two points dropped against Everton was disappointing when it's the last kick of the ball. But we bounced back really well in the Cup, West Ham. We, we're through, we're in the quarters. And that's, uh, that was a, a good a step in the right direction again, another clean sheet. James Cooper. Ollie, hi. Yeah. Um, I, know, I know every press conference recently we've asked you about social media and racism, but every time we've seen you, it seemed to have escalated. You know, yeah. whether it's male, female players at Manchester United, whether it's now managers, whether it's referees, is this a movement where things are going to change? And are we getting some sort of traction here that that you know it's going to be something constructive at the end of this process? Let's hope we can uh, at least, you know. Uh, Today, with uh, with all the abuse and discrimination on social media, for me, it's simple. If if you don't have proof of your identity, you cannot open an account. That's just as simple as. And it would be so much easier to uh, to uh, punish the uh, the numpties that I have uh, nothing better to do. Neil Cuthis. Just, yeah, yeah, I've just amused Did myself. You? Ollie, you made, a, you made a really good point there about the uh, two legs. Because there's not fans and because of this fixture congestion, would it not make sense just to have a one-off knockout game rather than sticking to the two legs? Well, that's what we did uh, last season. We, we met uh, somewhere neutral and we, uh, we made it a tournament. So, of course, home in a way, if we're going to keep that going, uh, it's, as I said, it's not, we do have a little advantage. It's, it's a disadvantage for, uh, for Sociedad, of course, to have their home game in Turin. 
So for me, I wouldn't stand in the way of that. There's probably other reasons why we why we don't. Laurie Willow. Well, um, seven goals for Scott McTominay this season. Um, was that something that you thought coming into this season you, you wanted to add to his game? And if he gets double figures, do you think that could play a significant part in how the team does as a whole? Of course, to uh, to add goals from uh, from midfield uh, is is vital. We've uh, we've seen oh, we've had last season our three uh, three forwards were brilliant and they were really efficient and scored goals sixty odd. Uh, and Bruno came in, scored goals. We needed more goals from midfield, and Scott has got that ability to uh, go box to box. He's a threat in the, inside the box, and he used to be a striker before. So, I think, yeah, to for us to to move up the league and to be successful in the cups, we we need our forwards to keep on firing, getting more goals, and then. I wouldn't mind uh, some midfielders adding adding uh, a few, yeah. And if Scott can get it to double figures, that would be uh, a very good season for a so-called defensive midfielder. Hello, Carlson. Yes, hello, Ola. Hi. Uh, you always said that you're following a plan and that you're taking the right steps and that you always want to, to fight for glory, of course. but. What do you see as a successful season for, for Man United and, and also on your path of development, in your opinion, at which point do your success have to be measured in trophies? Uh, you always you look go into every season trying to improve. And if you if you improve, uh, that's that's a step forward. Is it a big enough step forward? We'll have to see at the end. If if we end up with trophies, we're still in competitions. We're still, yeah, we lost in the semi in, in the Carabao Cup. We're in the Quarters FA Cup. We're still in Europe and we're second in the league. So at the moment, it looks like we've improved, but we're going into the deciding uh, period of the of the season. So it's now that we have to kick on. It's now that we have to keep our consistency, uh, get the quality higher, eradicate some of the mistakes that we're making and uh, be more clinical in front of goal. And so I don't want to say what is a successful season at the moment, but we have the chance to end this season with uh, or with the feeling of this season being successful uh, if we improve, because I think we've uh, uh, we've shown qualities that can can win us trophies. Andy Mixon. Hi, Ali. In your car today? Yeah, I'm in a Christian Sunday in Norway. <laughs> I, I wish. You wish. <laughs> if Fredchie plays on uh, the weekend, it will be his 100th appearance for Manchester United. He had a very difficult first season. What have you done to help him improve? And what does he bring to your team now that he seems to have become an important player? And how do you personally pronounce his name? Fred. Um, sorry? That's incorrect. Uh, it might be, but I'm Norwegian, so uh, he's, uh, he's really done well. I have to say, I've enjoyed working with him for the, for the couple of seasons. When I came, he... he it was a boy that was struggling a little bit, and the, the question, I don't know how many, the numerous questions I got in a press conference about Fred early on. And as I said then, is, is what we're talking about, players coming into a new country, it takes time to settle. And it took some time for Fred to settle. And when he has now, he's grown in confidence, he's, he's grown in his, there's less time in the Premier League than what he was used to. He's quickened up his game. Uh, he's not getting caught on the ball. Um, and I think I, I'm not going to take any credit for that, of course. It's the coaches. I think Michael Carrick, Kieran, they've been brilliant with him. But it's Fred himself that's had the hunger and the humility and to learn and want to improve and stick it, stick at it and keep working. And he, as you said, 100 games, that's, uh, 
there's not many people that can say they've played 100 games for, for Man United. And uh, I'm sure there'll be many, many more to come. And hopefully he, he will score from outside the box soon. But I'm not sure if it's going to be with his right. I've tried to tell him. Last two questions. First one for Paul Hurst, and we'll finish with Rob Dawson. Hi, Ollie. Just going back to the social media um, aspects of the game, do you think the abuse that are getting now is kind of bearing on their mind when they go onto the field? Because they might think, oh, you know, if I make another mistake, I'm going to get hammered. I'm going to get, you know, racially, potentially abused when I come off the pitch. Is that kind of making them a bit more scared when they are playing? Well, if it does, then we've come too too far, or we've already come too far anyway in this uh, uh, this concept. And the, the abuse has gone overboard and it's unacceptable. So I would hope that we have educated our players enough to to say to to stay away from from much of the criticism uh, as i said it to stop this it would be for me an easy it should be so easy that people just have to verify who they are to open an account and not all this bogey uh, with uh, all the fake names and stuff so that's my my wish that we can go. Okay, if you want to have an account, it has to be verified. So. Question for Rob Dawson. Hi, Ali, and just um, follow, just following on from that, is that something that the, well, the abuse of, of people on social media is that something that you've experienced personally, and, and is it possible for the manager of Man United to have social media accounts these days? <laughs> uh, I've probably been abused uh, right, left, and centre. That's just uh, the the way it is. But I, I know I don't know about that uh, at all. Um, and of course, uh, it is possible, but it would be uh, uh, might not have to be in my name as long as it's verified the account that it, it is me opened it. Probably, uh, I'm happy enough without it at the moment. I'm, I live in 2021, but I'm still still old school. I've got kids that uh, are on social media, so that should be enough. If if there's anything, they they ask me. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you. See you later.